There are a lot of off-grid systems out there, but this one's ours, and it powers our everyday appliances like AC units, refrigerators, TVs, lights, and all that other stuff our family was really surprised to find out we could keep when we moved off-grid. All right, let's jump right into the heart of the system. This is our battery bank. It has 25,600 watts of storage capacity, and each one of these five batteries can hold 5,120 watts a piece, so that's how we come up with that total of 25.6 kilowatt hours of battery storage. These are 48 volt batteries. So if you don't know what any of that means, don't worry. We had no idea when we moved off grid, but if you plan on going off grid, you'll become intimately familiar with all of these different electrical system components and things like that. But this is just an overview. So how do we recharge them? Let's head outside and I'll show you how we do that. Solar panels, ta-da. So we have our front row right here. That is eight panels. They're 400 watts each, wired in series. And then right back here, we have our back row of panels, also eight 400 watt panels wired in series. You'll notice a little gap in between right in the middle of them. And that's just because we used a different mounting system for these back here, but they're still wired exactly the same as the front. Grand total, 6,400 watts of potential energy that it will collect from the sun. We've never actually seen it go that high. It's generally on a typical day around, we'll hit a peak of about 5,600-ish watts. And then total for the day, this 6,400 watt array will bring in roughly 19 to 24 kilowatts of energy. So 19,000 to 24,000 watts of power to recharge those batteries. Does it run directly from this into the batteries? No. Next you need one of these fancy little boxes right here. This is an MPPT solar charge controller. And the most important thing to take away from this is to know that the energy the solar panels are collecting can't directly be fed straight into the batteries. So what happens is that energy runs through these lines right here in the right, does some really cool stuff inside of this box. And then when it spits it out of the left right here, these cables, it's now usable by the batteries. Now, the most I'm going to say about these in this video is that one, they're really cool. And two, think of them as like a two-way street. So power easily flows from one side to the other and back again. So when it sends the power across here into the batteries, it's able to be stored, but then whenever we need it for normal household appliances, it flows back through these same cables, through these boxes, and then down these lines into these two amazing boxes called inverters. This is the inverter. It's a 5,000 watt continuous power or 10,000 watt surge power inverter. And this is where the magic really starts to happen. So it takes that battery energy and converts it into energy that you're using in your home right now. 120 volt, 60 hertz. Maybe you've heard that terminology before, maybe not, but that's what you have run into your home right now if you live in the United States. We have two of those. So what we're able to do is provide 10,000 continuous watts of power or a 20,000 watt surge load if we needed to run a ton of appliances all at once. Now we're in familiar territory. So breaker box, fuse panel, whatever you call it, I bet you have one of these in or around your home. So the inverters that you see on the left of your screen that we were just talking about feed power into this service panel, and then that distributes it anywhere and everywhere we want it and need it, just like it does in your home. And we use that to power all kinds of things like ceiling fans, TV, and other fans that we have to use, our washer dryer combo, PlayStation and Nintendo type of stuff, mixer, convection oven, an induction cooktop that we use, plus an electric kettle for the French press, our refrigerator, and most importantly of all, the mini split. So what if we do if we don't make enough power? We run this super quiet generator. <laughs> In all seriousness though, this generator's done well for us. Just don't worry about that 9,500. Pay attention to the 7,600 running watts. That's what it can do continuous power and not just for 30 seconds, which is why we went with this one. It could take our batteries from 50% charge up to 100% in less than two hours. We've never run out of battery power, knock on wood, but if we did and we were at zero, we can go from zero up to 100 in about three hours, 20 minutes, and we could do all that while still using all of our appliances like normal. This is a cool screen that gives us real-time information such as how much power we're bringing in, either with the generator or solar, that's the PV charger, how much power we're using, that's the AC loads, or the state of charge of our batteries, that's what you see in the bottom left. 
If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. Also drop us a comment down below if you'd like a more in-depth video on anything to do with the power system. And now it's time for us to get back to more projects.